Here's why the Cleveland Cavaliers are a two-way powerhouse. Fueled by an influx of talent and internal development from prior years, the culture in the land has flipped in 21-22, giving the Cavs not only the second best defense in basketball behind the Warriors, but an extremely talented offensive attack as well. So how seemingly overnight has this all become a reality for fans in Forest City, and what are the focal points to what this Cleveland team does best? Stay tuned for all that and more. Before continuing, only 11.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. This is now the third different time I've broke down the Cavs on this channel in the last month or so, and the team just continues to shock the NBA as they've won 11 of their last 14 games. While we looked at the explosive up-and-coming talent in Garland, along with one of the frontrunners for Rookie of the Year, Evan Mobley, and another big man playing elite in Jarrett Allen, today we'll look at another layer to this Cavs team. We won't completely ignore those three, but I've barely touched on the impact of many of the Cavs' legit role players, including two recent pickups who've come over to Cleveland and had a massive impact on the fortunes of the franchise turning around. Those two pickups being European sensations in Ricky Rubio and Laurie Markkinen. We'll get to those two and a few others, but since the rookie phenom Evan Mobley, who's helped turn the Cavs into the second best defensive team in basketball, is currently in health and safety, we're going to start with one of our game's biggest fan favorites in Taco Fall, who got some rare taco time before the fourth quarter against the banged up Raptors. My Raps ranked down at number 19 in rebounding, and they were dead last in that area a few weeks ago, but let's still give some credit to the 7'7 seven seven man in the middle who on this play keeps three consecutive possessions alive by mercilessly hustling for the offensive rebound back to back to back times. With an overpowering 8'4 wingspan and 10'2 standing reach, I can't blame the G League Raptors for failing to hold down fall. Taco may struggle with his foot speed, but his size alone makes him an interesting threat to have in the depth chart who can be used for a multitude of factors, not just blocking the inbounder. I think this guy could be actually effective in scoring lineups. That's if the 26-year-old Fall can really put in the reps working strictly on his foot speed. If he does that, he'd instantly be a center who could stick around in Cleveland's rotation for anywhere from 8 to 20 minutes per game. The only thing stopping Taco from sticking on an NBA floor is his inability to move around swiftly, but if Taco can continue to hunt down offensive rebounds like he did against Toronto, maybe Coach Bickerstaff will give the Senegalese center some more run in the future. Speaking of Coach JB, the man got a pretty damn good Christmas Day present as, according to Woj, the Cavs extended the 42-year-old Bickerstaff through the 2026-27 season. Bickerstaff's been Cleveland's head coach since taking over from John Bayline during the 2019-20 season, and of course, JB's being rewarded for his role in the Cavs' 20-13 record so far this year, and Cleveland's overall storybook turnaround. Up to the recording of this video, Cleveland has had the biggest improvement over last year in win percentage and is firmly in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. Cavs GM Kobe Altman gave a great quote which you can pause to read right here, but now for a breakdown of Laurie Markkinen. Right from opening night when he dunked on the reigning MVP Nikola Jokic, we knew that the former Chicago Bulls 7th overall draft pick in 2017 had found a home in Cleveland. This past summer on August 28th, Laurie was acquired by the Cavs in a three-team deal involving the Portland Trailblazers. What an outstanding pickup that's looking like for GM Kobe Altman, considering the Cavs only had to give up Larry Nance, along with a single protected first round pick in 2022. Markkinen agreed to a four-year, $67 million extension as a part of that deal, and the finished product of Arizona has lived up to every bit of his $15 million cap hit. It was just over a year ago that Chicago failed to come to terms on an extension for Laurie, and that ended up being great for both the Bulls, who had space to acquire Lonzo, DeRozan, and Caruso this offseason, and it also benefited Cleveland, who ended up receiving a proficient stretch big man who's having a breakout year. Laurie's shown off his versatility for Coach Bickerstaff, as while his main position is the power forward, he's shifted over to the three in Cleveland's offense to contribute to a revolutionary tall ball lineup. While he's only making 32% of his shots from three-point range, Laurie attempting six triples per game provides spacing 
for inside bucket getters in Evan Mobley and Jarrett Allen, and regardless of how efficient he is, the threat of Markkanen taking threes in the first place opens up driving lanes for slashers like Garland, Okoro, and Rubio. Speaking of the Cavs' soon-to-be first-time All-Star at point guard in Darius Garland, he's continued his absolutely brilliant season. The month of December has seen the third-year sensation post an average of 21 points, 7.5 assists, and 1.6 steals, and he's shooting a flaming 51.4% from the fields and 44.2% from three. Garland's also gone perfect from the charity stripe this month and posted a 64.9% true shooting percentage plus a net rating of 20.6. Based off that insane production, it's almost unfair that the Cavs are able to bring veterans like Kevin Love and Ricky Rubio off the pine. The veteran Rubio, who was acquired back on August 3rd in exchange for Torian Prince, a 2022 second round pick, and cash considerations, has developed free-flowing chemistry with Darius Garland. Rubio and Garland have formed the Cavs' most successful two-man lineup that's played over 250 minutes. The Cavs are outscoring opponents by 17.1 per 100 possessions in the 468 games the duo has shared the floor, which has led to a 113.2 offensive rating and a 96.1 defensive rating. The on-slash-off numbers on the year paint a similar picture for both Rubio and Garland. Rubio has a net rating of 1.5 in the 13.3 minutes per game he plays without Garland, compared to the 17.1 net rating he has in the 16.1 minutes a game they share the floor. Similarly, Garland averages 18 minutes a game without Rubio and has a net rating of 4.1 in those minutes. Both Rubio and Garland are dynamic ball handlers who are great at moving without the ball. That's something we couldn't say about Garland before the 2021-22 season. But Rubio and Garland both have the unique ability to keep the defense guessing by cutting in and out of the lane to create passing angles and windows to finish at the rim for themselves. With all this playmaking on the floor, the Cavs' offense runs smoothly. When one gets trapped or it's late in the shot clock, you can just toss it to the other one, and they'll either get to the rim or create for their teammates, so it's a free-flowing system. As you've probably seen all over YouTube and in mainstream articles, the Jarrett Allen and Evan Mobley pairing is what's getting all the headlines right now, and rightfully so. The front court has stifled teams with their ability to lock down the paint and defend the perimeter at an uncommonly high level. However, that duo doesn't have the success they're having without the incredible play individually and collectively from Rubio and Garland. It's past time we show some appreciation for the other duo leading the Cavs to victory. The Cavs' backcourt right now is extremely underrated, but a man who greatly contributed to the 2016 championship team in Kevin Love, along with another stretch big man in the 25-year-old Dean Wade, are the two players who will break down next. The four-year man out of Kansas State and Wade is averaging eight points with shooting splits of 55.3, 47.8, and 80 in seven outings for the Cavs this month. Dean Wade is one of many versatile, natural four-slash-five men in Cleveland's depth chart who are at least six foot nine while being able to snipe from deep range. That's pretty scary. Kevin Love's a pretty decent mentor for not only Wade, but Markkanen to have, who both have nearly identical playing styles to an all-time great stretch big man in Kevin. And despite his prime days being far behind him, the 33-year-old is proving that his value in 20 minutes per game can make a massive impact. The former rebounding champion, most improved player, five-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player, and of course NBA champ, is making a career best by far 94.3% of his free throws. Also, while taking five threes in his 20 minutes per game, the 14-year vet is posting a career third best 41.2% from deep range. So the question is, where will this Cavs team finish in the Eastern Conference in 21-22? Best answer in the comments earns next video shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. Today's Community Speaks winner is Your Daddy, who says most dangerous part about Brooklyn, other than the big three, has to be their defense. People forget they're fourth in the league in defensive rating. Pause to read the rest of that great take, along with the honorable mentions. Thanks to the world for sticking around. Hope you have a great day. DFlow signing off.